Indebo, Indebo. I have ball, Bishop T.D. Jakes. I now now BBC News Ebo. Uh, to the Ebo people, I'm deeply delighted and grateful to have this opportunity uh, to spend a few moments sharing with you. And uh, learning more about you has been something that has fascinated me very much. Welcome to the moment of truth. You just heard Bishop T.D. Jakes. Ah, I love this story. The story inspires me. But unfortunately, unfortunately, is it going to achieve its aim, its goal? Because of what has recently befallen him, now, with all the troubles he had in America, is on his way. Will he be on his way to Nigeria? Will he, will he relocate to his uh, ancestors' land? Let's hear what he says. The story was really touching. Touching, touching, touching. And I really feel sorry for him. This is what bad companies, dishonest, dust, dust to a human being. Always be honest. Don't run faster than, than, than your legs. And, and don't run faster than God. Don't play f- smart on God. Stay tuned. I hear Bishop T.D. Jake's stories. Very fascinating. Right. So we are delighted to have you on our platform. And we just want to ask, how do you, how did this whole Igbo thing come about? We heard in the news uh, sometime back that you traced your roots to be from the Igbo people. How did that come about? Why did you even go that far to start tracing your roots? So it all started when Henry Louis Gates, who is at Harvard, decided to do this DNA testing to see where my ancestry came from. And so it was me, it was Oprah Winfrey, uh, it was Quincy Jones and several other people who participated in the initial study. And uh, mine traced back uh, to Western Africa and uh, to Nigeria in particular and Igbo uh, was where my, my ancestors were Igbo's. And so it was fascinating. I, and oddly enough, I was the only one that was tested that was full-blooded African. Wow. I hope you didn't miss that. Jakes is our brother. My point is, we Nigeria accept him with everything that is landed on his head now. We Nigeria, will Africa accepted him. Stay tuned to the end. Wow. So how did that make you feel? How did that make you feel? Oh, uh, it's indescribable. Yeah. Uh, It it gives us something that we as African-American people don't have, uh, which is roots, uh, as Alex Haley would say. It it, it gave me a better understanding of my roots. Uh, It's very interesting how similar I am personality-wise to how Igbo people are described. Uh, it explains some things to me about myself that was very fascinating. And uh, my sons and my daughters have all started studying uh, ancestry and about uh, Igbos and about more and more about Africa as we, I like to say, close the Middle Passage and reconnect with our brothers and sisters from over there. All right. So do you have like a direct connection or maybe you have someone that's, um, introduces you to how Igbo people do things. Do you have someone you are in direct connection with that is Igbo? Everybody who's Igbo that I run into in America uh, will always talk to me and teach me little things that help me to understand. Uh, Lacan has been quite helpful and I'm still in the learning process, but I find it all very, very fascinating. Great. So what's the most fascinating thing you have seen about Igbo people? I know you have done deep research on that. So what is it that you have found about Igbo people that you are happy about to be identified with them? Well, they're described as being hardworking and industrious, innovative, uh, with a strong business acumen. I deeply relate to that. Uh, uh, upwardly mobile people, uh, progressive in their thinking. Uh, it, it, it explained me to me. Uh, it, it's 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 odd that I would have never that I was never born there, 
and yet I see so many traces of that. I've always been entrepreneurial. I've always had a strong business acumen. Uh, I've always been uh, aggressive in business as well as in faith. And though I'm more well known over there for the faith aspect of it, I own several companies. I've always had my own resources. And uh, it just explained the way that I think to me. Okay, so uh, did you finding out that you are evil have any effects on you as a person and the way you do things? Did it have like any impact on you? Well, my, my great-grandmother was born a slave. She died when I was 10 years old. And so our family stories had passed down from the moments the boat landed. And this just confirmed what our family story had verbally and, and in written writing form been passed down to us as well. Uh, I think it gives you, it, it's hard to explain the hole that that fills up to, to know a little bit more about where you came from. One of the terrible tragedies of the transatlantic slave trade is not just that we were taken from our home and from our culture and from our people and from our food, but but we lost our history. And uh, history, African-American history, uh, is taught over here from the times the boat landed. And then we assumed a name that does not define us. So Jakes is actually a German name. And it only signifies who owned my my ancestors. So to reach beyond the boats and beyond the chains and to touch a soil where I came from and and was in fact free and to understand that that my ancestors were something before they were a slave uh, is extremely gratifying and uh really confirms why I have such fascination with the continent of Africa and always have. Uh, my whole house is decorated with African art. Uh, I always wanted to see what success looked like in my color. And in this country that growing up as a boy, that was a rarity. And uh, so most of my house has African art in it. Uh, I, I often wear uh, African att attire. Uh, I'm honest, when I preach, I find them very comfortable. Uh, I have all kinds of them, and people send them to me from everywhere. Uh, so uh, I often preach in them, and I have a huge following in Lagos, Nigeria, and uh, even above Dallas, and then Nairobi, Kenya, and then Atlanta. So it's pretty global, but I have a strong constituency in South Africa and uh, Mozambique and and uh, and so they they we talk back and forth. So when I'm in Nigeria, I experience the food, and so I'll eat the fufu and the jollof rice, and and have those kinds of experiences. And uh, and uh, it's 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 really nice to me, really nice. Okay, let's talk about the food you have had in Nigeria. Can you, aside the food, what have you had in there? Have you had like local Igbo-made food? Oh, I've, I've had, I probably had more than I can name because, because I, I go to Ghana quite often, uh, Accra and I, I go to Lagos quite often and some of it I don't even, uh, know the names of. Uh, what I have learned ab about the food is that it is almost always hot and spicy. And, uh, and, and so I've been trying to duplicate the spice. You cannot find that particular type of spice in the United States. So now I'm trying to get our oxtail to taste like yours. Uh, oh, oxtail yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing about it, I, I ate it before, but oxtail over there is so hot it makes your head sweat. <laughs> and 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 I and I liked it. You know, I liked it. So I, I'm trying to imitate it. I haven't been able to do it, but I, I try. All right, so um, let's talk about the governance in Africa and, and cultural awareness. And sometimes uh, when we are dealing with pandemics, such as the types that we are dealing with now, it creates an opportunity for us to have dialogue. Uh, we have, we have uh, adopted a hospital in Kenya and uh, we're able to send ventilators uh, to that hospital. Uh, we have more reasons to be together than we do to be divided. We have dug quite a few boreholes in different parts of Africa and built houses. 
uh, particularly in South Africa. I think we are better together than we are apart. You just heard Bishop T.D. Jakes. He thinks we are better together than being divided. Will Africa accept Bishop T.D. Jakes with their open hands? Open hands. Ah, let me know your thoughts. He's your brother. He made a mistake. He's going to be relocating to Africa. It might not be Nigeria, anywhere in Africa, because he has his resources there. He has already has the plans for Africans. And he has been to many places in Africa as well. He has businesses there. He has connections there and all that. My point now is, let's debate it. Will Africa ever, ever trust Bishop T.D. Jakes with all that unravels, unveiled what is currently going on now in America? If he escaped jail or sentencing or whatever and he decided to relocate back to Africa because it's over for him in America. Where else will he go? Go back Back to sender, go back to your ancestors' land. Would they accept him? Would they forgive him? Um, the other one, Didi has run to Jamaica because that's where he came from. When you shit for church in other people's lands, that is when you remember where you came from. Let's debate it, and I'll see you in my next video. Do you enjoy this video? Do you like it? Let me know in the comment section. Bye for 